Soon Sentinel-1B will be put into orbit working as a constellation with Sentinel-1A. Both satellites will gather operational data for Copernicus, the European Union's global monitoring for environment and security program. This program aims to offer users from around the globe satellite and in-situ data, along with dedicated services. Already we can see that this data is changing the work of many institutions. Here at the Danish Meteorological Institute, the DMI in Copenhagen, Copernicus data has definitely an impact on the activities. Copernicus is changing our work in, in sort of in two ways, both that it has provided us with a platform to combine all the data that we are collecting, uh, but also in the sense that uh, we can now provide a better service to our users uh, because we now have funding to produce these forecasts uh, that uh, our users are asking for, the forecast for Danish waters, for the ocean currents, uh, for, the, yeah, for the salinity and temperature. One of these products that the DMI produces are ice charts for the Nordic waters. This process of receiving environmental data and making ice charts is key for living in the Arctic regions. With lives of people working and traveling at sea at stake, it's necessary for the DMI to track the position and thickness of sea ice on and around the shipping routes. The creation of these ice charts greatly benefits from the new Sentinel-1 data. Well, we get uh, especially Sentinel uh, data from ESA. Uh, we use that to make ice charts of Greenland. Uh, especially in the winter time, uh, it's very dark in Greenland. So the good thing about Sentinel is that it's radar imagery. So it doesn't matter whether it's dark or it's, it's uh, <coughs> daylight. Also in the periods with bad weather, where we have a lot of clouds in Greenland, it can still see through the clouds. So we can see why we have ice and why we have open water. And then we make these ice charts that we send to the vessels sailing around Greenland, but also between Denmark and Greenland. Where in earlier years the DMI had to rely on planes, helicopters and the occasional satellite to gather less than optimal data, the use of the Sentinel-1 data has been a game changer. These high resolution radar images are not only useful in all weather conditions, but also their frequency and coverage is an important factor. Today, the gathering of data by Sentinel-1A already happens at a very high frequency, but this will double with the launch of Sentinel-1B. The timely images of the Sentinel-1 satellites allow the DMI to keep ice charts much more up to date. I think having access to Sentinel-1 images means that we have a much more flexible approach to our work. We can make our ice charts when they're really needed. When we know vessels are uh, entering green and water, so when they're reaching certain areas, we can make ice charts because now we have images almost every day uh, of the Greenland waters. This process of ice mapping is an excellent example of the difference the Sentinel-1 satellites can make. But they provide many other services as well, such as forest mapping, detection of oil spills, volcanic activity measurements and disaster monitoring. The Sentinel-1 satellites and their services are a perfect illustration of the goals of the Copernicus program. An operational monitoring tool for our environment with services for thousands of users worldwide all working together to protect our planet and its people.